Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about the command pattern, which is one of my favorite patterns because of all of the incredibly cool things it lets you do. So let's get started now. Before we get started, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Atlantic.net Hosting. And this is an incredible hosting company, which is giving you an entire year of hosting completely for free if you sign up with the link down in the description below. And this isn't some cheapo server. This is actually an incredibly powerful server, which is more powerful than the server I even host my own website on. So you know that this is going to be powerful enough to handle any of your needs. On top of that, they have incredible reliability and redundancy on their servers, so your web page is always going to be up and always available, which is a great thing to know. On top of that, you're going to get an additional $50 of free credit if you sign up using the code KYLE, so make sure you check that out using the link down in the description below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the video you came here for. Now to get started, on the left hand side of my screen, I have some really simple code for a calculator that has a value, and then we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And down here I've just added 10 and then divided by 2 and we're getting our output of 10 and then 5 on the right hand side of the screen. And every time I save it's going to change. So if I divide by 3 for example, you see it divides by 3 over here. And right now this is not using the command pattern, this is just a basic JavaScript class that you're probably all used to. Now before I go start breaking this down and implementing the command pattern for this calculator, I want to talk a little bit about what the command pattern is and why you would even use it. And the idea of the command pattern is to take the different operations that you want something to do and encapsulate them into individual commands that have a perform and then an undo method. So essentially you can do the operation, you can do the command, and then you can undo that operation. So if we take a look at our calculator here, you can see that we have four separate commands or operations that we can do on our calculator. We can add, subtract, multiply, and then divide. These are our different commands. And we want to take these commands out of our calculator and actually make them their own objects, their own things that have an execute and undo function. And the reason for this is that we can actually play back and rewind our commands so that we can add and then we can undo our add, which is essentially the same as subtract. So we can do and then undo all of our different commands that we want to. Also, we can combine together different commands really easily. So if we wanted to add and multiply something, Normally you'd have to call add and then you'd have to call multiply, but you could just create a command called add then multiply, which will do the adding and the multiplying in the correct order, and it will even undo them in the correct order for you. This is the real power of the command pattern, the ability to do and then undo, as well as to make your commands separate from the actual object that you're doing the command on. So to get started, let's abstract this add out into its own command. We're just gonna create a class for it, and we're gonna call it here the add command, and this add command is going to take a constructor, and this constructor is just going to take the amount we want to add. So we'll say the value to add, and we'll just set the value to add here to that value we passed in. So now we have a reference to the value to add. It's essentially the same thing as the value we passed to the function we're already calling. Then inside of here, as I mentioned, we need to have an execute function, and then we need to have an undo function. And this execute function needs to take the current value, essentially this dot value, because this command is no longer in the calculator. It can be used for things that aren't the calculator. We could do adding, for example, in a game, we could have some damage calculator that does adding, while this could be a calculator on a desktop of a computer. They could both still use this add command, but they're completely different operations. While in the other example, if we did it like this with a class, we would need two different classes to handle those two different types of calculations. So now inside this execute, like I mentioned, it needs to take our current value. And then all we need to do is return our current value plus our value to add. And as you remember up here, that's very similar to this add function. But instead of setting our value, we're returning the value since these execute functions are going to be called on anything. So we just need to have the result returned so we can actually use that inside the thing we return it to. Now undo is going to be very similar. We need to pass in the current value and we're just doing the current value minus this dot value to add. It's the exact same thing as execute, just reversed. And now what we can do is actually create a new add command. So we could say const add command is equal to new add command. And let's say we wanted to add 10, for example. And then in order to execute that, we would just say add command dot 
execute, and we would have to pass it the current value of 0, for example. And if we log this out, we should get 10. So let's log that out and make sure we delete all of the code down here. And you can see we're getting 10 printed out. So we know that our command is working. If we change this to 20, it should be 30, and so on. And that's great. And what we can do even further is we can actually log out the undo operation of that. So if we add 10, we want to get the result of that. So we'll just put this in a variable. We'll say new value is equal to that. So now we have 10 plus 10, so this new value should be 20. Let's print it out. And then we want to undo with our new value. And we should get left back with our original value of 10. And as you can see, 20 is what happens when we add the first time, and then we undo and we get put back down to 10. Now obviously in this trivial case of adding and subtracting, having an undo function is pretty useless. But when you can think of things such as saving users to a database, that's something that having an undo function for is incredibly useful because the undo is really complex. But if you just have an undo method and an execute method, that makes working with that save functionality really easy. So now let's actually look at how we can implement this command inside of our calculator. To do that, let's just remove this current add command, and we're going to add in an execute command function inside of here, and this is going to take the command that we want to execute. Essentially, we just need to call that execute function. So we can say that our value is going to be equal to our command.execute with our current value. So what this is doing is it's saying, take our add command, call execute, pass it in our current value, which in our case is zero to start with, add in that value that we gave to our add command, and then set that to our new value. So now we have all of our values being properly added with this one execute command function. The last thing we need to do is just keep track of all the commands that we've done. So we'll just call this our history, and we can just say this.history, and all we want to do is push on that command. So now we're actually keeping track of the commands that we've actually executed, and we can create here an undo function. We can just say undo, and what this is going to do is it's going to get a command, which is going to be our most recent command. So we'll just say pop. That's going to take the most recent thing off of our array, remove it from the array, and put it inside this variable. Then we can just set the value equal to our command dot undo, whoops, undo, and we just need to make sure we pass it in our current value. Now what we can do is all the way down here, we can remove all this code, we can go down to our calculator, and we can just say calculator, whoops, calculator dot execute command, and we want to execute a new add command where we're going to add 10. Then we're going to log out the value. So we'll say console.log calculator.value. And this should be 10. If we save, we see we get 10. And then let's just try undoing that. So we'll say calculator.undo. That's going to undo whatever the most recent thing was. We don't need to keep track of that. And then we can just console.log our calculator.value. And you can see it brought it all the way back down to zero for us. And now I could go through and remake every single one of these commands into its own new command so I could remove subtract and multiply and divide, but I'm going to do that off camera and come back to you when it's done. Okay, and with that, I've removed all of our add, subtract, divide functions from our calculator. We just have execute, command, and undo. And then I've created all of our commands, add, subtract, multiply, divide. They all are very self-explanatory. They just do the operation and then the undo is the opposite of the operation, just like the add was. And we can use all of these different commands. For example, we could combine and add in here a multiply command, and we could multiply by 2. And if we save, you can see multiplying by 2 gives us 20. And when we undo, it brings us back down to 10 because it divides by 2. But really, this kind of looks like a lot of code to do the same thing we were doing before, right? This is way more complex and way more difficult. And you are correct. In this very simple instance, this is a lot more code, and it's really not worth the effort. But where commands become really useful, is the ability to combine commands together and make the save and execute functions of them all just work seamlessly. Commands ideally start out really small and then build upon themselves to make more complex commands, which then build to make even more complex commands and so on until you have one single command that does everything you need it to do for a specific instance. Take for example a button. You know when you close most applications, a lot of times you're going to get three options. You're going to get the option of save, whoops, you're going to get the option of exit, and then you're going to get the save and exit option. And normally, if you implement this without commands, you have to write the save functionality inside the save function, the exit functionality inside the exit function, and you have to duplicate both save 
and exit inside the save and exit function. But with commands, we can create a save command, we can create an exit command, and then our save and exit command just uses both of those commands. We don't have to redo any of the logic. And the undo is all taken care of for us inside that new object. So let's actually do that with add and multiply. We'll create a class called add, then multiply command. And inside of the here, we're going to do a constructor and it's going to take our value to add as well as our value to multiply. And then we're just going to set those values. And then there we go. We got value to add and value to multiply and value to add. There we go. We actually have those values set. And then just like every other command, we have an execute and an undo function, which are going to take the current value inside of both of these. And all we need to do is just execute and undo our commands. So up here, what we can do is we can actually just change this to a command. We can just say add command and we can set that to a new add command where we pass in our value to add just like that. And we can do the exact same thing, but this time for our multiply command. And we can do here a new multiply command. And of course, we're going to pass in the value to multiply. Now we just have these commands and we can just say that our new value, whoops, new value is going to be equal to add command. Make sure we put the this in front of it, this dot add command. And all we need to do is call execute with our current value. And then we can do the exact same thing, but instead of using current value, we need to use the new value. And we can say the multiply command dot execute with the new value. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking our current value, we're executing the add command on it, and then we're taking the value we get from that and executing the multiply command on it. And what we're getting returned here is essentially adding and then multiplying. We're combining our two commands together. We could do the exact same thing inside of our undo function down here. We just need to make sure we undo them in the correct order. So we're going to undo our multiply command by passing it the current value. And that's going to be set to our new value. Whoops. Just like that. So now we have our new value from our undo. And then we're just going to return the undo of our add command with that new value just like that. And now let's actually use that. So right now we're doing add and multiply and it's giving us 20 and then 10. So it's giving us 20 essentially as a result. We can do add then multiply, make sure we pass it the same parameters of 10 and two. And we can see that this should be 20 and then it's gonna undo back to zero. And if we save, you see it puts it to 20 and then undoes back down to zero. So you can already see the power of combining together different commands. We can even combine a new command with this add then multiply we could have an add, then multiply, then divide, which takes an add, then multiply and a divide command and calls those together. You can really combine any commands that you can possibly think of and make any new command out of all of these small commands. One place that this command pattern is really popular is in a text editor. Think about Word documents, for example. They have a button for bolding text and they have a shortcut for bolding text. And you also have an undo, undo shortcut, so you can undo any of these commands. So let's say you highlighted some text and bolded it by clicking the bold button. You want that bold button to do the exact same thing as the bold shortcut on the keyboard. So they're both going to use the same bold command. That bold command will have an execute, which bolds the text that you highlighted, and then an undo, which essentially just unbolds the text that you originally bolded. And both the button and the keyboard shortcut can use the exact same command. So it's really easy to hook these things together. The real power of the command pattern is the ability to create these small little commands that are completely separate from the thing that implements them. In that Word document example, we didn't have to do an on button click event listener and then put the bold text in there. We just had a bold command and gave it to the button. Same thing with the keyboard shortcut. We just gave the bold command to the keyboard shortcut. We didn't have to worry about what the bold command was being used for. It's just a command and all it knows is that it can be executed and undone. And the thing using it just knows that it's a thing that can execute and be undone. It doesn't know that it's bold. It doesn't know what it is. It just knows it's a command. So this decoupling is incredibly powerful and the biggest reason to use the command pattern. And that's all there is to my favorite pattern, the command pattern. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out my other videos in the design pattern series linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.